Hello everybody, I'm Jonathan and welcome to the House of Faith. We've got another really great broadcast ready for you guys today, so let's pray and get right into the Word. Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness and your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your precious Word. Lord, your Word is so valuable to us. We love your Word. We love your Spirit. And Lord, I'm asking that you give us eyes that see Jesus, ears that hear His voice. And Lord, our hearts are open, ready to receive the Word this morning. We're ready to receive direction. We're ready to receive correction if need be. We're ready to receive instruction straight from the Word of God. We honor you today, Lord, and we thank you for our open ears ready to hear the revelation knowledge that you'll bring through your Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 So excited to welcome Lindsay back to the broadcast again. She was with us last week, and we're so excited about the Word that God's given her there's some great revelation. If you missed it, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. If you didn't miss it and you heard it, I still encourage you to go back yeah. and listen to it again because you need to get these things rooted mm -hmm. and grounded deep in your heart. Let these things be a part of your life mm -hmm. and make it every day an everyday practice to hear the word, to, to read the word, and to allow the word to to, to permeate mm -hmm. every part of your life. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you guys to go and check that out. But today, grab your Bibles, yep. grab your notebooks, mm -hmm. allow God to speak to you today. Honor God and he will honor you. Right. Lindsay, why don't you just take it away? Whatever the Lord's yes, put on your heart, let's go for it. Yes, sir. So again, reiterating what he said, make sure to go back and listen to the past three parts. Yes. Um, the first two with you and Miss Katie. Yes. And then last week with the two of us. Because we're really going to be building on all of what was already said. Yes. So if you haven't heard it, I really strongly encourage you to go back and listen to those first. They before, build on each other. Before continuing this one. Yeah. Because today we're really going to be talking about receiving your healing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've already dealt with a lot of the common questions. Right. And things that people deal with that hinder them from receiving it's not because god hasn't given that's right he has that's he's already right. provided that's it. exactly it's right it's just because there's just different things that have hindered us from being able to receive it mm. and so really that's what we're going to be talking about today is that there's um in my mind there's three things that go into receiving like that are very important yeah it's not everything not every situation yeah is connected to these three things but a lot of it has to do with these three things that are really one thing. Right, right. Because <laughs> they're yeah. all connected to each right. other. So let's start with the first one. And the first one is um, you need to ask yourself this question. We all do. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing mm. on a consistent basis? Yeah. Are you hearing the word of God? Mm -hmm. Are you listening to him? Are you in his presence? Or are you listening to what the doctor said on a consistent, Ooh, basis? Yeah. consistent basis? Wow. I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to your doctor. Right. So don't just like, well, I'm just not going to do yep. anything, he let's, says. Let's not run into no, the ditch. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't go from one end to the way over yeah, the other. Right. Stay in the middle here. That's right. And But are you listening to the word? Yes. Is, he, is his word more important mm. than what yeah. someone else is that saying priority. to you? It's yeah. the priority. Mm -hmm. It's that one thing, you know, yeah. as Jesus said um, in the story of Martha and Mary. Yeah. You know, listening to him is the one thing that is needed. That's right. And so what are you hearing? Um, Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing mm. and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. You know, the way it's translated is actually hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. It means it's yeah. continued. All the time. All the time. Never ending. You, it comes by hearing the word of God. Yeah. Just because you heard it two months ago, you need it doesn't mean <laughs> you know it now. You That's need right. to hear it again. That's right. So what are you listening to on a consistent basis? That's right. And then the second thing is, what are you thinking about? Mm. Yeah. You know, that's the, you heard it, so are you thinking about it? Yeah. You know, you and I have to take responsibility mm -hmm. for our own thought lives. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying you are going to control every single thought that comes through your head. That's right, that's right. You know, it's as Dad Hagen says, you yep. can control if a, if a bird flies into your hair, but um, you can't control, you, what was it? I'm sorry. He, he said, you can't control the birds that fly over your head, right. but you can yes. control the ones that make a nest in your hair. Yes, that's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> yep. That's a good way to put it. It is. And so you can't 
you can't control every single thought that comes through. That's your head. right. Yeah. Some of it just happens, but you can control what is your thought life. Yeah. And the belief systems from but, those thoughts, yes. that's well within your control. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You, you can control what you're thinking about on a consistent basis. That's right. And um, uh, Joshua 1 8 tells us mm. to meditate in the word day and night. Yes. It says the book of the law, but yeah. back then it's they the didn't have what we have. Instruction from the Lord. Now. Yeah. It's the, that's what it's translated to is instruction yes. and leading. That's right. So his word. Yeah. And so meditate it. Meditate on it day and night. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Psalm 119, 15 and 16 says, I will meditate on your precepts and mm -hmm. contemplate your ways. Yes. I will delight myself in your statutes and I will not forget mm. your word. Mm. Oh, that's important. <laughs> yes. Because, <laughs> <laughs> and I think one of, one of the big reasons why is because the devil's always going to be talking to you. Mm -hmm. He's always going to be trying to bombard your thought mm -hmm. life with his imaginations or his, you know, ideas or mm -hmm. mindsets or thoughts or ways of thinking. Yeah. And if you're not giving yourself, um, you're not giving yourself to the word of God, you're not allowing that word to be a, a part of your thought life, then those things are going to overtake. And then that's mm -hmm. going to become yeah. your foundations. Mm -hmm. It's going to become your root systems. That's what you're going to be rooted yeah. in is his ways instead of God's. Right. That's right. And, you know, when it says here, you know, to meditate, mm -hmm. you know, that can be kind of like a weird word today yeah. in the yeah. world. You know, it's not talking about worldly meditation, right. you know, where you're sitting with your arm your legs crossed. Mm -hmm. and That's not what it's talking about. So the word meditation actually means, this is the definition definition for it from these verses, is to ponder, yeah. to think upon, to muse, to imagine, mm -hmm. and to mutter to oneself. Wow. Which means like you're saying it to yourself underneath your breath. You're not being yeah. weird and just right. talking randomly right. to yeah. yourself. Don't answer yeah. yourself, but talk to yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> But that's what it means. So it's not talking about worldly meditation. It means this is what I'm thinking about. Yeah. During the day, you know, I heard, you know, I heard this one verse, you know, this morning in a daily devotional that was only like five minutes, but yeah. I'm thinking about it. Right. Throughout the day. Mm -hmm. It's not that, oh, I have to just stay with my face in the word. Glued yes. everywhere you go. Like, yeah. Like, you know, right. that's not what it's talking about. It just means um, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, all right, yeah, this is what this means. I'm just muttering it to myself yeah. for whatever is needed in my life that yeah. day. So that's what it's talking about there. You know, it's not, it's also when it says, you know, to imagine. Mm -hmm. Talking about your imagination. This isn't like a child's imagination. Right. You know, where they have imaginary friends. And right. Yeah. It's not, it's not fantasy. Right. That's yeah. Not what that's it's a saying. good way to put it. It's this imagination is really what we use every day Absolutely. you use your imagination yeah. every day whether you realize it or not yeah and i'm sure um, most of you have heard the pink elephant right yeah, um, yeah, example yeah. you know where i said don't think about a pink elephant don't yep. think about it and what are you doing you're thinking about, you're thinking pink about elephant. a pink elephant that's right you're imagining it and then you know when you park your car mm -hmm. when you're to go into a store when you come out of the store whether you realize it or not you're using your imagination mm, yeah. to remember where you parked your yeah. car yeah yeah you're using it all the time right but are you using it for your benefit mm. or in a negative way? Yeah. Are you imagining yourself sick? Mm. Are oh, you imagining wow, yeah. yourself having to cope and deal with this mm. the rest of your life? Mm. Or do you see yourself yeah. the way that Jesus sees you? That's right. And that's healed. Yeah. And so your imagination is really important. And yeah. so you have to start seeing yourself healed. Mm -hmm before you're going to see it out here. You see it on the inside with your imagination first. Yeah. And, you know, um, I wanted to read this. This was a study. It was done many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we can still um, glean from it today. Yeah. It's, uh, it was a study done on more than 2,800 men and women, um, 65 years and older, mm -hmm. that found that those who rated their help as poor are four to five times more likely to die in the next four years than those who rate their health excellent. So you might be thinking, well, well duh. <laughs> you know, their, their health is right, poor. Right, yeah. But this was the case even in, if examinations show the respondents to be in comparable health. 
Wow. Their health was the same. Wow. There was nothing more wrong with the people who rated yeah. their health poor than excellent. Uh -huh. That was just the way they saw themselves. Wow. And these um, findings were actually supported by a review of five other large studies. Wow. And this totaled over 23,000 people. Wow. And they all came to the same conclusion. <laughs> it was the same thing. How you see yourself is important. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you see yourself in poor health, yeah, that's the way you're going to be. Right. That's what you're going to get. Yeah, you'll walk it out. You'll live that mm -hmm. out. And you'll uh, you'll never rise above how you see yourself. No. You see yourself as a loser. Mm -hmm. You see yourself as a failure. You mm -hmm. see yourself sick. Yep. You see yourself poor and broke. Yep. And well, you know, that's just uh, uh, just the kind of family I come from. Right. Or, you know, I don't I don't have the kind. If of, I would have had a better upbringing, maybe. Yeah. Be or if I have, I don't have those kind of connections. I don't have mm -hmm. this. And really, it becomes a victim mentality. Right. Where you end up seeing yourself as a victim to every mm -hmm. part of life and everything yeah. that's happening to me. Everybody's out to yeah. get me. Uh, you know that yeah. kind of mentality. You start living it out. You start walking it out because that's how you see yourself. And then that's where bitterness and offense come Ooh, in. Oh yeah. And that is a big hindrance mm. to you receiving. Oh yeah. You start getting offended because what is that? It's pride. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, all your eye, your eyes are on yourself. Yep, yeah, it's self centered. Yep. Absolutely. And even things that maybe didn't go the way you thought they did. Yeah. Because you thought about it. Yeah. So much. You, you exaggerated it. You exaggerated it in your own mind. You used your imagination against you. Yeah. Wow. And now yeah. you're offended. That's really good. Yeah. And so, but what you see is what, what you behold and what you see is what you're going to become. That's right. So what you see, mm. how you see yourself on here is what you will become. That's Just right. Just like these people. They saw themselves in poor health, even though they were not yeah. in poor health. Yeah. That's what they became yeah. because that's what they saw. That's right. Um. Uh, but going on to the third thing, it mm. is, um, what are you talking about? Mm. That's all connected to what did you hear? You heard it first. Yeah. Then you started thinking about it. Now you're talking about it. Yeah. And there's this quote from, from Charles Capps um, mm. that says, your words are building blocks of which you construct your life and your future. Mm. Your words set the cornerstones of your life and you live within the confines of the boundary you create with your own words. Wow. Situations, circumstances, and conditions are all subject to change. But with the support of your words, you can establish them in your life forever. Mm. So even though your circumstances can change, yeah. if you keep talking about it, right. you're establishing them. Yeah. They were subject to change before, but now you've established them in your life. That's right. And, you know, I'm not trying to be word police right. or anything like that. But it that. does matter. But it does matter what you were talking that's about. That's right. I mean, it's important to God. That's, that's right. That's how he created the world. Yep, that's right. Was through his words. That's right. And it says, you know, that the same power is on the inside of us. Mm-hmm. So we are creating with our words. That's right. As well. That's right. You're creating so, your future by the words you're talking today. Yeah. And you're, Jesus said this. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, right. the, the mouth speaks. speaks. Mm -hmm. And so if you've been putting trash in, or even not even just like, you know, trash by the world's mm -hmm. standards, but even just condemnation. Yep. You've been, you've been receiving that, meditating on that, mm -hmm. and you've been hearing that. Yep. Then that's what you're going to be talking about. And, you know, generally I can figure out where people are by mm -hmm. listening to them for about 30 minutes. Yeah. Because you, you, people will inevitably yeah. give themselves away what, what they actually believe in their yeah. heart. Mm -hmm. And and that mm -hmm. Jesus was right. Uh, one, one person said it this way. You know, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. One pastor put it this way, out of, the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth leaks. Yeah. And the mouth is just going <laughs> to leak out whatever's overflowing in the That's heart. Right. And right. if, if you're not giving yourself to mm -hmm. this. So it says to guard your heart. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. With all diligence. Yep. That, you be a diligent <laughs> guard, guard, which means you show, show up. up. <laughs> you show up to guard. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you're not asleep on the job. Right. And that's yeah. so important because you'll never walk out this, mm -hmm. what God says about no. you, if that's not what you're declaring out of your mouth. That's right. Those declarations are very important. That's right. And then um, Psalms 12, 14 says, a man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Mm. Mm. So he'll also be satisfied or not satisfied yeah, with right. bad yeah, by yeah. the fruit of his mouth. It yeah. goes both ways there. That's right. 
But um, just as many people, you know, take medicine, mm -hmm. you know, to if they're dealing with symptoms in their body, they'll take medicine to help um, push down some of the symptoms and alleviate some of that. Yeah. We're to take the medicine of the word mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. By speaking it. Yes. And, you know, that's actually what Proverbs um, 4.22 says. It said his word, his word yes. is life to those that find them and health. And this word health can be translated to medicine. Mm. So it could read, and is medicine to all their flesh. Yeah. So we take the word like medicine. Yeah. Which means you're diligent yeah. on when on taking it every day. That's right. You know, if people have to take medication, they take it even at certain times during the day. If That's they have right. To. Yeah. But it's usually multiple times a day. Right. And how much more should we be doing that with the word? That's right. Which is, this medicine doesn't have any side effects. Oh, thank God. <laughs> That's, you don't have to deal with any other side effects yeah. from taking the medication by taking other medications. That's right. That's you right. know, just continuing on this path. But you take the word of God as medicine, which means you're doing it on a daily basis. Yes. Probably multiple times a day. Yep. And I'm not saying, you know, um, you have to just stay in the word for 12 hours every day. Yeah. You know, just sitting down in your prayer closet yeah. or whatever. And you no, know, but it's back to what we said earlier. You mutter it to yourself. That's right. You know, you're thinking about it. Yeah. That's how you take the word. Yeah. And then you speak it over yourself. Mm -hmm. But um, um, Isaiah 55 says, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return to me void. So who was... Who was talking here? This was God talking. Mm -hmm. He's saying, my word that goes forth out of my mouth yeah. is not going to come back to me void. Yeah. How is it going to come back to him? Because mm -hmm. we're speaking it back to him. Yeah. So yeah. when we speak mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, it's not void when we speak it. Yeah. That's what he said. And that's what he promised. Yeah. It has substance. Mm -hmm. It's full of power. That's right. So, and this verb void could also mean empty or vain. So these words are not empty or in vain. You're not saying them in vain. Yeah. But You're it actually accomplishes yeah. whatever it's meant to accomplish. Yeah. It has the power to accomplish, accomplish. whatever it is that you're saying. That's right. That's powerful. And, you know, there's an example of this that I would like to read as yeah. well in the Bible. Absolutely. It's in um, Mark chapter 5. This is a story of a woman. It's called The Woman with the Issue of Blood. Yeah. She put into practice all three things that we talked about yeah. today. Um, so let's read, um, starting in verse 25. Let's see. So Mark 5, 25, it says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. And she spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Mm. So I heard a pastor talking about this story recently. And he kind of explained it in a way I just never really thought about before. Yeah. Um, talking about the physicians that she saw. You know, in our mind, we're like, oh, she just went to the doctor's office. Right, Because that's yeah. what we're used to. Yeah. But he talked about, for her, being a Jew, back then, she would have gone to, you know, a religious physician. Mm. Which means they ministered the law. Right. And he actually detailed that I would, I want to make sure I get it right. Um, but... You know, they use the law and tradition yeah, yeah, yeah. to treat any sickness or disease. Right. Um, you know, uh, he gave an example of some things that they may have made her do. Mm. Um, and it was, you know, usually they would mix together different leaves, you know, do like an herbal tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. we would know today. Um, but they would uh, make you give up certain things, mm -hmm. like fast certain things, yeah. of course. Um, uh, she couldn't, she may not have been able to eat for a certain amount of days. Mm. Um, you can only sleep on your right side <laughs> for a certain amount of wow. days. Wow. Like it was just a lot of tradition and just like a lot of, I would have been tired of it too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Cause she was going through this for 12 years. That's a long time to deal years. with that, man. And you can actually, um, read in Leviticus all the things that she could not do. Yeah. Mm. As someone who was unclean. It actually specifically talks about someone, a woman with an issue of blood, mm -hmm. um, dealing with the discharge of blood and what they could not do. Wow. It, you can go and read that. We don't have time to get into right. that yeah. today. Yeah. It would yeah. take a while. But there is a lot that she 
could not do. Mm -hmm. and, you know, she, you know, she was under condemnation here. Oh, for from sure. From these physicians. Oh, absolutely. So it's back to that. But, um, you know, you can continue reading here um, in verse 27. It says, when she heard mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. So she had most likely had condemnation here. Yeah. Before. Until. Until she, she heard, heard about, about Jesus. Jesus. But, you know, I was wondering, like, what did she hear? Yeah, yeah. And if you go back, and it was, um, she heard stories mm -hmm. of the miracles he had performed. Yeah. And probably of some of the things he taught. Yeah. But what she most likely, a good a story she most likely heard was the story we, re we read last week. Yeah. Because it happened in a nearby city mm. in just a couple chapters before this. Yeah, yeah. Of, That's true. This man forgave his sins mm -hmm. and then healed him. Yeah. This man who who was a sinner, unclean, mm -hmm. which is what she was. Yeah. He made Jesus made him clean. Mm -hmm. He forgave his sins and then healed him. Mm -hmm. So in her mind, it's she's gonna start thinking about this. Or if he did it for him, he could make me clean. Yeah. He can heal me. Yeah. And you know, that was very powerful. Yeah. So she, but another thing too, and this does away with the wrong thinking of, you know, healing was only for this age, right? Not for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know these people could get healed because they were hearing from Jesus physically. Mm -hmm. He was physically present. She didn't hear these words from his mouth. Yeah, that's true. She heard wow. about him. Yeah, wow, that's she true. didn't hear from him. She heard about him. Yeah, and she got healed based on a word she believed. Through someone the else. The reports about yes. Jesus, which is what which this is. Which is what this is. Yeah. You know, this is his word. So we're still, we're hearing from Jesus, whether we know it or not. That's exactly right. But, you know, but even if you're hearing it from listening to us or a different preacher, you're hearing about Jesus, you can get healed. That's right. Based on just hearing about him. That's right. And, but it says um, um, that she heard about Jesus and then came up behind him. Um, in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Amen. Yeah. So obviously she heard about him. Yeah. Started thinking about it. Yeah. And then she said it. Yeah. She started saying it. And you know, that sparked hope in her to be healed. Absolutely. And this hope was not, you know, a wish, mm -hmm. but at the beginning of the expectation. Yeah. To be healed. And let's see, let's read verse 28. For she said, if I for she said again, mm -hmm. if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And her faith caused her mouth to start moving. Mm -hmm. She had the hope. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like what Hebrews 11 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah. So this faith was giving substance to things yeah. that she was hoping for. She didn't look well. You know, she didn't feel well. Right. But that didn't do away with the faith yeah. to be well. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we're almost out of time. So let's finish this on up here. It says in verse 29, Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? Mm -hmm. He looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what she had done, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Yeah. This means go into peace, which means remain at peace, remain forgiven, yeah. remain in this. Be whole. Yes. Yeah. And you, then you will keep your healing. Absolutely. That's basically what it says. Absolutely. And this is important for you and I. You need to get these words in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So say it again with me. I am mm -hmm. forgiven yeah. in Jesus' yeah. name, and I am healed yeah. in, in Jesus', Jesus yeah. name. We're out of time. Don't go anywhere. Lindsay and I will be back in just a minute. Redemption was what Jesus did when he bought you back with a price. I don't have to have this in my body because Jesus took it on his. If you're experiencing sickness in your life, it is unjust 
for it to be there. He took your infirmities. He said, give those to me. I'm going to take them and I'll dissolve them. You just heard highlights from Pastor Jonathan Cowan's two-part series, Redemption Revealed. For your gift of any amount this month at Cowan Ministries, you will receive MP3 downloads of this series in its entirety. Additionally, for a gift of $25 or more, we would like to offer you the Jesus Healed Them All package. This includes the Redemption Revealed series and the Jesus Healed Them All long sleeve t-shirt. This true to size, soft t-shirt serves as a great reminder of God's willingness to heal them all. To request this month's offer, visit us at cowanministries.org or call us at 706 706- Three six three zero seven seven one. Welcome back, everybody. Lindsay, thank you so much for being on these broadcasts the thank last you. couple of thank weeks. Thank you for having me. It was yeah. an honor. We've been so excited to be able to share this word. And, mm-hmm. you know, Lindsay is the media director for Cow Ministries, and she does a wonderful job. She's the one that puts together all of the House of Faith videos, mm-hmm. all the other videos for Cow Ministries, mm-hmm. and she does a great job leading that yeah. entire department. And We're so thrilled and honored to have her, but she's also a wonderful anointed teacher as you guys got to see and and experience with us here on the broadcasts. So, but thank you so much for for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was definitely the Lord speaking through me. It was a little different being on this side of the camera. Absolutely, yeah. Um, But I do, I want to encourage you to get the product that is available this month, the um, Jesus Healed Them All package Yes. of... You know, the two-part message from Pastor Jonathan, you know, it's a little bit longer of a message, so he can go a little bit more in detail than we yeah. can in a 20-minute um, yeah. broadcast. Right. So I encourage you to get that. And then you can also get the Jesus Healed Them All sweatshirt. Yes. And this shirt, it's very soft. It's yep. great quality. Absolutely. But it also will help remind you of what we've talked about today. Yes. To remember to keep imagining, keep muttering to yourself. Yes. About these promises. So like get your shirt, get that message today. Absolutely. And just a quick update on our Going Strong project. We've got some information right here on the screen for you guys. Thank you so much for partnering with us in prayer, partnering up with us in faith. Uh, this whole broadcast is is completely because of our partners and mm-hmm. we're here to take this message of faith, to take this revelation of faith and teach it to every generation. That's what we're here for. So thank you guys for partnering with us. We believe that we're increasing and growing exponentially this year in Jesus' mighty name, not only for us, but also for you. Thank you guys for being a part of our wonderful family of faith. Join us next time here on The House of Faith. This program was made possible by the generous support of the partners of Cowan Ministries. If you'd like to partner with us or explore additional resources and teachings, please visit us at cowanministries.org. This ministry is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift of any amount is tax deductible. Thank you for supporting Cowan Ministries as we pursue our mission of teaching every generation the revelation of faith.